Hey everybody, hope y'all guys are doing uh, okay, hope that you're getting your day off to a great start. Uh, another segment of Riding with Rick. Uh, it's been a minute, uh, but we're going to keep this thing going. Uh, this one, sort of on a light heavy note, uh, some of my sisters going to get mad at me for this one, but you know I love you. Uh, if you follow me any stretch of time, you know I go hard in the paint for my sisters. I love black women. Uh, but some things I have to call out and I have to be direct about. Uh, some of you agree with me, some of you won't. But I, I, I'm going to put it down from where I come from. And you can take it or you can leave it, but we're going to talk about it anyway. There's this video, right, that's out moving around. And it is of this little boy. His mom has decided she's going to take him on a date. Now, you know, we do this thing, you know, so I want to get this out of the way. We do this thing. Dad should be the first date for their daughters. So I have no problems with moms being the first date for their son. Uh, but you have to keep things going. When a dad is the first date for his daughter, he's setting the standard of how things should go in her life. He's showing her what it should look like, how a man handles a lady, how a man does things, opens the doors, takes a person, how it should feel when she's being engaged by a man. It needs to be the same thing. So it's it's, it's a little bit more challenging for a woman to put a, to be a first date for her son because she's tend to, tend to, she tends uh, by way of emotion to want to do it in the way she feels versus what he needs to see. Uh, I am more personally along the line of a man talking to his son and giving him the the lowdown on it or, you know, something of the fact. But, okay, you know, in the state of fairness, let's say this is what's going on. But in the video, her idea of taking her son on a date, which should have actually been done if it's going to be do, done for the purpose of developing a certain awareness of how to move and how to operate. Uh, again, I think that that should be done by his dad in a different way. But, okay, first thing first, you don't choose you let him choose where he wants to take you. Uh, first step, he needs to know how to lead. He needs to know how to be decisive. He needs to know how to uh, to be able to be in a position of leadership uh, and protection and all this other stuff. So all this stuff is supposed to be a part of this experience, right? But she decides that the date is going to be for a pedicure. He immediately objects. She's feminist. He immediately objects. What I think would probably ha what happened is she she initially said it and he responded in such a way she thought it would be cute. So she videoed it because it was funny to her. And, you know, from in a certain perspective, it, 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 it's funny how he responds. He's like, oh, no, you know, I love you, right? And, you know, and, you know, basically he's telling you, I, I want to do things to make you happy. But, hey, you're pulling me in a place I don't want to be in. He's telling you that his masculinity, even at that age, is being challenged and he doesn't feel comfortable in the environment and it's his perception okay so let me put the disclaimer in there because some sisters already done lost it and the reason i'm on here is because of the comments in the in the comment field of this video so let me put something it's nothing wrong with a man taking care of a care of his feet he, it, it, matter of fact it's the harder working you are as a man the more you need to take care of your feet uh it's nothing wrong with a pedicure but i think that in this instance, if it's going to be a pedicure, when a man gets a pedicure, he goes and gets a pedicure. He understands who he is by the time he goes and gets that pedicure. First and foremost, he's not trying to establish who he is and what he is and what's acceptable, what's not acceptable. He knows. Nothing's going to change the fact that he's a man. So he can go in and get his feet taken care of. And if he's a single man here, now he's peeping it out. Hey, shoot, man, future wife, he might be up in here. All a bunch of different things that can go through his mind. But the one thing he's 100% certain of, because it's already been instilled to him, developing him, and, and literally uh, ratified in his psyche, that he's a man and how he moves. So his masculinity isn't threatened simply by the pedicure. And there's nothing wrong inherently with the pedicure, but your, 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 your mom's taking you to a place where it's gonna be predominantly women. Everybody's in there. The natural subconscious evaluation of that situation and natural perception by his own uh, response to it is, hey, this is what women do. Now, it's not just what women do, but it's a thing that women do. It's more associated with femininity and masculinity. And at his age, it's hard for him to distinguish. His objection to it was should have 
been what led her response. He's uncomfortable with this. And ask yourself, why is he uncomfortable with it? And then if you don't understand, talk to a man. One of the things that I see my sisters do consistently is be given game by men about men and say, no, that's not what it is. That's not always the case. That's not, it. that's not, that, that's just this. Even from someone like myself, I mean, literally hours and hours and hours and hours, research, study, childhood development, literally written books on the shit. I'm literally consulted by experts for the shit, but I'll come up and say, nah, nah, that ain't what it is. You know what I'm talking about. And that's because you want to go on feelings. Hey, it ain't nothing wrong with it. I'm spending time with my son. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And not understanding the direct impact it's going to have on him long term. Uh, and I mean, the beautiful thing about this is he had an immediate objection. To him, it wasn't okay. And it wasn't that it is something wrong with the pedicure. It's that he's associating that with something that women does. And he needs to be at a point in comfort level in his own masculinity, wherever that comes at. And it won't probably come until he's an adult because there's this point where guys are pushing each other, jabbing at each other about stuff they're doing and, it, and you know, taking shots at with one another. So his male peer group is not gonna be okay with it, especially as he moves into his teens. He's probably preteen looking at it, maybe nine or 10. So as he moves into his teen, his home is definitely not gonna be like pedicure, dude, what you do? So he's gonna have to go through that process to where he eventually gets to a point where he realizes, hey, there's nothing wrong with it. It's the way you take care of yourself. Some men just do it at home by themselves, but you need to take care of your feet. You need to take care of your hands. You need to have a certain way you carry yourself. And there's nothing wrong with that. But that has to be established and understood. And it's not for the mother to establish. The mother establishes and teaches and teaches things from a nurturing role and a place of her feminine energy. She cannot ratify or affirm masculinity through the movement or behavior associated with femininity. Whether it's supposed to be associated with femininity or not is irrelevant. What you have to understand, his objection was telling you he's not comfortable in that. And it's specifically because his masculinity rejects it. And what it is actually is that his masculinity is immature. His masculinity only wants to see and be around things that it's comfortable with, that it can beat its chest about, that it can stand out on, that it can do because it's in its infancy, it's in its immature, immature state and it's developing itself. It needs confidence. It doesn't need anything that makes it question who it is, what it is, how it moves, how it operates. So he needs to be immersed in masculine energy. Now here's the thing. If at that age he's going to be taken to get a pedicure, it needs to be by his dad who he looks at as a man. And why? Because the dad is gonna give it a completely different perspective. The conversation is gonna be different and he's gonna move and roll into that differently. Dad's gonna, hey, look, man, we're gonna go here. Let me tell you something. While everybody thinks this is what women do, we men need to take care of ourselves too. The harder we work, the more we put in work, the more we need to take care of our feet. If our feet aren't healthy, we won't be healthy. This is what we do. Now, we're going to go in here. We're going to check it out, man. It's going to be some nice little hotties up here. You're going to look at it. You're going to see this. You're going to see that. But you need to take care of your feet. Enjoy yourself, whatever. You know, give him an experience to where he sees the positivity in doing it. And he doesn't automatically relate it to something women do. It's something that women enjoy getting done. It's something that men need done. And that, that that's kind of it. You know, hell, I get pedicures. But, you know... Again, I never got a pedicure as a kid, so I couldn't tell you how that would sound to me. I'm like, no, I'm not getting pedicure or manicure. I keep my nails clipped. I keep them filed so they don't scratch me or scratch anybody else. But hey, you know, other than that, no, I'm good. And then you start to realize that other things that go along with your the health of your hands and your feet that you need to take care of. Um, and it, you know, it's also a part of your presentation. I think that there's a, a part of that that needs to be okay if we're going to introduce him to the, the first time he's introduced to it it should be with a man that he respects i don't know if dad is in this on this but what i can almost guarantee you that if mom is talking about taking him on a date first of all two mom is talking about taking him to get a pedicure dad is more than likely not in that house because dad ain't having it not the, again that it's something inherently wrong with getting a pedicure it's that you've got to be careful how you socialize your kids 
you got to be careful of what you're moving into them and how they are perceiving it and responding to it. One of the things we tend to do is ignore the perception of the child, ignore how it makes the child feel. Hey, ain't nothing wrong with that. Come on here. Let's no. Ask yourself, if a child objects to something, ask yourself why they object and what is the reason. No child is sitting up objecting just because they want to object. That's a way of a feeling. And their feelings have valid uh, validation. Their feelings are valid. Their feelings have meaning. Whether their feelings are based on something that's true or not is irrelevant. The fact that they're feeling that way needs to be addressed. You need to bring a level of calm and uh, and be very, very clear in the fact that you are concerned about what they're going through. That is uh, immensely important in the grand scheme of things. So again, my thing isn't in uh, there's something inherently wrong with a with, with a male getting a pedicure. I'm saying that a child that age that perceives that as something that's feminine. And you got to understand that experience is probably going to be in the midst of a lot of feminine energy. So all the energy that that kid is going to, and you got to also understand this. That energy is real. It's not some uh, philosophical, religious idea. Energy is real. The body emits energy. Masculine energy is different than feminine energy. Um, and when you're in that environment, that will be a level of energy. And you also have to understand because uh, children are born into worlds where they cannot communicate, they're highly sensitive to energy. So they respond to energy. Have you ever seen a kid just perfectly fine? A certain person pick them up and they lose their mind they just start screaming and hollering and another person get them and they calm down energy they literally are responsive to energy now the older we get we start to let our minds tell us we can figure things out and we start uh depending and trusting on our energy less we need to continue to allow ourselves to trust energy energy is one of the truest uh and most accurate ways of receiving information we dismiss it far too frequently and we normally pay the price for it this kid is telling you my energy ain't feeling that and you're sitting up saying that's uh, why you tripping you know hey whatever and i watched the video and i'm looking at it and you know it's got some comedic uh elements to it but at the core of it it's just one more way that we're going to emasculate and feminize uh our men and the emasculation part comes in that you know there are women on this this post talking about just take him he'll you know he'll like it no he said he didn't want to go he said he didn't like it first and foremost if this is a date the man gets to choose if he wants to do something or not yeah you do things for your lady that you might not want to do it's called compromise it's about keeping baby happy and all that but it should never be at the expense of your masculinity it should never be at the expense of your confidence it should never be at the expense of what solidifies and anchors you and who you need to be for that woman. So when I'm sitting up and saying, you know, hey, no, I'm not doing that. It's not because I'm trying to ignore your needs, your desires, your wants. I'm saying, hey, that's not a good space for me. It does not allow me to be what I need to be. Now, it, this has in no way has anything to do a while about inconvenience or discomfort in the sense of man, I got to show up and go do this it's about that place right there isn't going to make me a better person that place right there is is going to create a problem and a man knows where he where he needs to be and where he doesn't need to be and a lot of the things I see are manipulation and control to get men into places that you want a man that he doesn't flourish in and he's not meant to be in but you still want him to be what he needs to be and you're upset because he can't because every time that I step into a space that's not designed for me, I lose power because it's not designed for me. And in many instances, it's designed to diminish me. And it's my job to be in a place where I can flourish. It, and, I, and I'm not talking about not working. Anybody that knows me knows I work my ass off. Anybody knows me, I put my woman's life before mine. Anybody knows me, I'm going to go to the back for my wife and my kids all the way to the grave. This is none of that stuff. What I'm talking about is you telling him what he's going to do, what he's not going to do, how he's going to do it. As a man, his job is to cover you. As a woman, your job is to affirm him and give him the support he needs so that he can cover you. Not to tell him how to do it, not to tell him where to do it, but to sit up and say, hey, what do you need me to do to make sure you can do what I need you to do? And all of the things that are being pushed on us that make us push that notion aside 
and feel that anything is okay because we feel good about it is how we ended up in the place we're in. So when I evaluate something, I don't evaluate it on feeling. I evaluate it on outcome. So we can sit up and say all we want to. Ain't nothing wrong with that based on feeling. But look at the outcome. You want to wonder why so much violence is happening, so much uh, African-American adolescent and young adult male violence is taking place. You want to know why there's no uh, natural inclination of young black males to come together and create families. You want to know why there's no natural inclination of young black males to step in and protect a black woman in, in peril. You want to know why these because they're not being properly socialized. They're not being properly developed to move in their masculine energy. They are having feminine uh, characteristics, feminine behaviors, uh, and feminine energy pushed upon them to the point to where they are falling back and behaving. A lot of that aggression that turns into violence is coming from an emotional perspective. And we are supposed to have emotions like anyone else, but we're supposed to be able to manage our emotions and we're supposed to operate from the responses to the emotion, not the emotions themselves. We are supposed to be built for that. But we are constantly conditioned to move outside of what we naturally do to align with a new cultural norm. We weaken ourselves. Again, this isn't about whether it's something wrong for that kid having his feet done is that he immediately rejected it and he rejected it because at that level, it challenged his masculinity. And at that point, his masculinity isn't strong enough to resist that challenge. And he's telling you, that's not where I wanna be. And the moment that you make him go, again, you emasculate him, you take away his ability to sit up and say, what step and what spaces I'm going into. So now, not only is he in an environment that he doesn't feel comfortable, he has a woman dominating him or manipulating or controlling him. And then you're gonna, at some point, ask him to be a leader for a woman. When I'm working with my clients and they've got young children, and I mean young children under the age of six, one of the things I tell single moms is find him male modelship. Find him some people, some men that you look at and say, man, these men have their stuff together and let them be around him and model him. When he becomes six years old, at that particular point, you need to stop disciplining him, especially physically. If you are a physical disciplinarian, stop uh, disciplining him physically. Stop being so dominant in your conversation and control. And here's why. You are, in, you are socializing this kid. You are training him. You are programming his subconscious for behavior and you're showing him how to be controlled and dominated by a woman. This has nothing to do with respect for a parent because when there's a man around, a real man is going to demand that he have respect for his mother. A real man is going to demand that he carries himself in a certain way. A real man is going to do that. When you don't have that around, then you got to ask yourself, how do I put myself in environments? Because if you're in an environment where there's no man you can take your son to and him see modelhood, you're not covered either. So you're uncovered and then you're trying to move and you're expecting him to know how to cover when there's no covering for him to model. And your entire uh, process is getting him to do things he, he doesn't want to do. That's a natural inclination at that age. He's just feeling, hey, look, that ain't that ain't me. I don't want to do that. I'm going to go cut some yards. I'm going to go shoot some ball. I wanna, whatever he's associating with his masculinity that allows him to develop it in confidence. Because see, masculinity is not just developed. It's developed in confidence. I'm moving in something that I naturally am good at, that I'm doing, that I'm better at. I'm good with my hands. I'm accomplishing things with my hands. I'm building things, fixing things. All these things build confidence because that's how we work. Our brains move from front to back. Your brains, ladies, move from left to right. Two completely different things. Trying to get him to align with your movement, your thinking, your feeling is going to put him in a place where he can't function properly. This isn't feeling, this is science. And so what I'm saying is, just because it feels right, doesn't mean it's right. Again, you want a son that functions like a man and grows up to be a man. And we keep talking about there's not enough good men. We keep talking about the, the men are too violent, the men are too criminal. Well, they were boys at once and somewhere the ball was dropped and the ball was dropped in a substantial enough way that we're seeing it play out in a way that it becomes the norm 
the, the, the narrative and the norm. Even though there are some good men and there are probably more good men than bad, we're not gonna see them and there's enough of the bad that they can paint a picture and present that as who we are. And we start to buy into that narrative. That starts when they are boys, when they can be shaped, when they can be molded. And there is an absence of black male modership. I'm not, I mean, I'm not ignoring that. This isn't about, hey, ladies, you, you, you push it. I'm saying there's an absence. Well, in the absence, we don't get to say, well, there's no absence, we're just gonna do it. That's how we burn our women out, trying to do everything a man's supposed to do on their own. That's how we end up with, with a high level of depression because women are trying to carry everything by themselves. And then you're trying to take who you are naturally and teach him how to do something you're not built to do. Hell, from the basic, the very most basic part of manhood that distinguishes us from women, at the most primitive and rudimentary levels, you can't teach him that because it's modeled. He wants to do it because he sees it, and that's peace standing up. That's one of the most primitive distinctions between us. Starts very early in age, but he wants to do it. He goes from sitting down, being potty trained, to wanting to stand up and pee because he sees daddy doing it. You can't even do that because that is something that is modeled through the natural observation. So if there's not a man in the house, this isn't about shitting on single women. This isn't about sitting up blaming nobody for not being with them. This is about saying, okay, for whatever reason, pops is not in the house. Find men who can model manhood. If you are having that much of a difficult problem finding men who can model manhood, the first thing you need to understand is you're not covered. If you're not covered, you can't function in the fullness of who you are. And you are being thwarted and the power that you pack as a unbelievably powerful female. And second of all, there's no, uh, there's no cover for you. There's no protection for you. You're exposed. No matter how tough you talk, no matter how tough you are, you're exposed. You are never going to be a match for any man, man that comes after you in any aggressive form. And I'm not just talking physically. That's just simply why you need a covering. So you need to find the spaces where the men will provide the covering. So on that note, look, I just had to address that. Again, I'm about to get off of here. I want to thank you guys for dropping in. Look, if you believe in the work we do at the Odyssey, Odyssey Project, look in the description box, show some love, and support us. Uh, keep watching. If you like what you heard, click the like button, click the share button, and subscribe. On that note, I'm out of you guys. Have an unbelievable remainder of your day.